President Trump didn't let up his war of words Wednesday against two GOP senators who said he was debasing our country. Mr. Trump tweeted, quote, the reason Flake and Corker dropped out of the Senate race is very simple. They had zero chance of being elected. Now act so hurt and wounded. There hasn't been a Democratic senator from Tennessee in decades, but with Senator Bob Corker's upcoming departure, could this seat go blue? James Mackler was the first Democrat to announce his candidacy for Senator Corker's soon-to-be open seat. He is an attorney from Nashville, an Iraq War veteran, and continues to serve in Tennessee's National Guard. And he joins me now. Welcome to you, sir. Thank you for having me. So you decided to run before Senator Corker announced that he wouldn't seek re-election. And here's some of what he said on Tuesday about President Trump. Let's take a listen. I don't know why he lowers himself uh, to such a low, low standard. And debases our country in the way that he does, but he does. And, uh, you know, look, I don't like responding. I, you know, you can let him go unanswered, but uh, uh, it's just not me. To, we don't do tweets like that. We've responded twice to, again, untruths. But, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that our nation finds itself um, in this place. What's your take on the comments from Senator Corker this week about the president? The fact that Senator Corker waited until after he decided not to run for re-election really shows what's wrong with politics as usual in Washington. You know, we're facing all kinds of national security threats right now from North Korea and otherwise. This is not the time when we need the president to be engaged in a Twitter war with Senator Corker, the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. Well, what would you want to tackle first in Washington? What would be your first priority? My first three priorities would be jobs, education, and health care. Uh, the people of Tennessee are hardworking, they're industrious, they will make better lives for themselves. Mm -hmm. They just have to be given those opportunities, and there is a role for the federal government to play in creating those opportunities. Well, you think that Democrats should be working with President Trump on certain issues where maybe there is common ground? Because a lot of what gets the, the noise and the attention uh, are folks who just say oppose at all costs. Where do you stand on all that? I absolutely think that Democrats need to be working with the president. Democrats need to be working across the aisle. If there's anything I learned in the military, it's that you work with everyone on your team to get your mission accomplished. When I was in my helicopter, I didn't worry about whether the people next to me were Democrats or Republicans, whether the people behind me were conservatives or liberals. We had each other's back. We had a mission to accomplish. And we should expect the exact same thing from our elected officials. How do you think the rhetoric affects that ability, though? Doesn't it have some kind of impact on your ability to get things done when there's a whole lot of name calling going on? Well, we need to get away from the name calling. And the fact that I can't change everything in Washington doesn't relieve me of the responsibility to get there and try and change something. So how would you try and rise above some of that? What would be your specific way that you try and kind of get that, that bipartisanship that you talked about? You know, I have an, a history of, of service and of sacrifice. I joined the Army after 9-11 because I felt the need to serve my country. I felt like I had to do more. I entered this Senate race six months ago for the same reason. I saw that our politicians in Washington weren't working to solve the most important problems for Americans. And I had to step forward. I had to serve again in another capacity. And providing that example of servant leadership and of someone who is willing to work across the aisle to solve problems is the first step to overcoming that problem. So will we see attack ads at all? Is that something that would be in your sort of uh, arsenal as you campaign and continue to? I'm traveling the state making sure that people understand who I am, what I believe in, what my values are, and that we share so many values in common. I'm not interested in attacking my opponent. Uh, we've been divided for too long as a country. My goal is to bring us together to solve our, our most important issues. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, Republican Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn. According to FEC filings, she had 10 times as much cash on hand as your campaign did. That's as of last month. There has not been a Democratic senator from your state in more than 20 years, and President Trump won there in 2016. So how do you plan on getting Tennesseans to support you? I've been traveling the state. <clears throat> I've been talking about the fact that I did join the Army after 9-11, that I'm a military veteran, that I'm someone who truly believes in service. That message of service and sacrifice, it resonates all across Tennessee to all different people of all different ideologies. Folks are really responding to that, especially those who are ready for change. We've been talking a lot about the Democrats, uh, about the Republicans, rather, and sort of the very public squabbles that have been happening. But on the Democratic side, you also have uh, very much forces pulling the party or trying to pull the party in one direction and others trying to pull it in, an, in yet another. Where do, where do you see things? Um, how would you align yourself or position yourself within that spectrum of people um, who are the Democratic Party? 
You know, I'm not interested in trying to align myself along a spectrum within the Democratic Party. I'm not a political insider. I'm not a career politician. What I'm interested in is solving problems. And that's a real contrast between me and someone like Marsha Blackburn, who has spent her career taking money from special interests. Uh, but is the Democratic Party heading in the right direction here? I mean, what do you, what is your thought? Because um, there's been a lot of debate about this and what the vision should be for Democrats moving forward. I'm concerned about the people of Tennessee moving forward, mm -hmm. about us heading in the right direction. I'm interested in working on jobs, education, and health care. Again, frankly, I'm, I'm not interested very much in what the Democratic Party would have. I'm not part of the, the party, and I'm not looking for a political opportunity. I'm looking to serve. Uh, you know, uh, the, the thing about some uh, voters out there is when they try to make these decisions, they do look to that kind of categorizing to help them understand where someone stands. So from that perspective, if, if a voter is out there and trying to get a sense, he has the D next to his name, but what does that really mean? I mean, what for you does that mean? Well, what it means for me is that I'm someone who's looking truly to serve the people of Tennessee, someone who's looking to take that proven track record of service and bring it to another arena. When I joined the Army, I felt like that was the front lines of the threats we were facing at that time. Now our democracy is threatened in another way by inaction in Washington. I want the people of Tennessee to look at who I am, what I'm looking to do, and frankly, to let me learn from them as well. That does take a little bit more work than just looking at a label, but we've got to look past those labels. I'm going to take one more try at this. <laughs> what does it mean to you to be a Democrat? Well, what it means to me is working for people, working for people, not for corporations, working for opportunities so that we can all reach our maximum potential. All right, one last question before we let you go. As an Iraq War veteran, what are your thoughts on the controversy surrounding President Trump's condolence call to the widow of a soldier killed in Niger? So, as a helicopter pilot, one of my duties was to fly what we call a hero mission. That's the mission where you take the bodies of your fallen comrades to the airfield for their final trip home. Those are the most difficult and meaningful things I've ever done. And the fact that politicians would use those sacrifices as political props breaks my heart. And if there are folks out there listening to this um, and interpreting it a different way, is it possible in your mind, do you think that there was genuinely good intention on sort of both sides of this. This could perhaps be a misunderstanding is what some people have said to me. Well, I, I think we always need to account for the possibility of a misunderstanding. I don't ever want to assume the worst motives about anybody. I just don't want to see this politicized. All right. James Mackler, thanks so much for stopping by, James. Thank you for having me.